nombre es Good Lía. afternoon. My name is Lía, and I'm here with my co-interpreter Naira, and we're going to be your interpreters between Spanish and English today. My name is Lía, and I am here with my partner Naira, and we will be your interpreters between Spanish and English today. Practicamos en el marco del, de la justicia del lenguaje. We practice via a language justice framework, which ensures a commitment to making sure that all people can express themselves fully and participate and have access to information and dialogues and decision making. Justice, which involves the commitment to assuring that all people can express themselves and participate fully and that they have the same access to information, conversations and decisions. La justicia del lenguaje también reconoce y valora todos los idiomas, especialmente... Language los... justice also honors all languages, particularly those of first peoples who continue to be in resistance. Naira and I are in Los Angeles, California, and Los Angeles is unceded Tongva territory. And values all languages, especially those of the indigenous peoples of this land. Uh, which continue in existence and resistance. Naira and me, uh, we are in Los Angeles and or in California, which is a uh, territory of the Tongva people, unceded. Vamos a hacer uso de la herramienta de interpretación. We will be using the interpretation feature via Zoom, which is already activated. If you actively use English and Spanish, or if you don't feel 100% comfortable using both languages, please use your preferred language and stay on that channel for the remainder of this event. You'll be able to listen and speak in the language of your choice. If you are bilingual, that is to say you are 100% comfortable speaking in both languages, then you can leave the interpretation feature off. Be having a conversation at the end and that we will be using actively Spanish and English. So if you are not 100% comfortable in both languages, please choose your preferred language and stay on that channel for the rest of the event. You will be able to speak and listen uh, in your in that language. If you are bilingual or and leave the interpreting off. Si nos acompaña por computadora, eh, ve un icono, un círculo con líneas. Eh, en... If you are connected via computer, you will see a circle with lines, a globe icon, and you'll be able to select that and click on the language of your choice. If you are joining us via cell phone or tablet, there is an icon with three dots that says more or más, and you'll click on that. You'll see another menu that says language interpretation. You'll click on that and you will choose your preferred language and then click done. Please don't mute original audio. I think we will be listening to a few presentations. So please do not select mute original audio. If you are joining us by on a computer, you'll see an icon of a globe or a, a, a circle with, dot, with lines in it in the uh, bottom of the Zoom screen. Click there and you'll choose English or Spanish. If you're joining through uh, by a telephone or a smartphone or a tablet, you'll see a button with three dots. It says more. From there, another menu that will say language interpretation. And from there, you can choose Spanish or English and then click done. Please do not silence the original audio that will, I believe we have some videos we'll see today and it will help um, uh, to not silence the original audio. Cualquier problema que tenga nos avisan en el chat o se comunica eh, con les, eh, les eh, bueno, eh, le, le ponen. If you el... have any issues with the interpretation feature, please let us know through chat so we can help you. Just a few reminders. Uh, to our artists, please keep your microphone on mute when you are not speaking. Only one person should speak at a time. It's impossible to interpret for more than one person. Please speak at a moderate pace. Please don't forget to take breaths in between your ideas. If you read something aloud, please be conscious of reading at a much more moderate pace than usual. And please speak in a loud, clear voice. That's all on our behalf. 
Thank you so much to LACE for their efforts uh, to create multilingual spaces uh, via Cruci Fronteras. And we are very excited to be in company with these artists today. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, thank you for connecting to this chat about the uh, with the fire theory. We are so excited to welcome these intergalactic collaborators. And uh, before anything, I want to remind you all that LACE, Los Angeles Contemporary Exhibitions, who I am a curator for. My name is Daniela. I forgot to introduce myself. We are on Tongva territory and we recognize the resistance efforts that the Tongva people have carried through for many years now and that they will continue to be in cultural resistance. And we want to recognize that we are in Los Angeles in a place where many communi indigenous communities from all over Latin America uh, reside uh, who have been displaced and continue here in struggle. Thank you so much to Malisa Guevara, Mauricio Altan Rodriguez, Ernesto Bautista, and Mauricio Esquivel for being here today with us this evening and to the entire audience. Mauricio is in Nueva York. Craig and Ernesto are in San Salvador. Melissa is in Colombia and we are in Los Angeles. So I think it's important to give you all some context uh, you know, when we talk about intergalactics, I'm going to give you all a virtual tour. If you are in Los Angeles, please visit us. Our exhibition is open until August 14th. And for those of you who aren't uh, present here with us, we also have a, a mini, a virtual mini tour. I'll share a little bit about Intergalactics Against Isolation. It is an exhibition and a diasporic, diasporic research project that is based and, and founded in Central America, the heart of the Americas, uh, alongside with uh, Southern Mexico. Intergalactics is, this exhibition is a series of collaborations. Uh, right now we're looking at Beatriz Cortez uh, alongside with a collective from the city of Mexico. Uh, also the Cachitel Collective from Guatemala. And this Intergalactics project concentrates, uh, focuses on identifying and working with collaborative artistic practices that respond to the many um, migrant policies implemented by the US. And this concept of the physical borders and conceptual borders and we recognize that this is a political machine that the US has created and led in creating a global system all across the world, right? And so intergalactics is um, a conjunction uh, and birth off of the Zapatista efforts in the 90s, which we utilize to create a um, solidarity network across regions. And, you know, because we, what we do reject this notion of the, the nation state, right? And so it's been an amazing collaboration with the fire theory 
and they're going to talk ab about this installation with us today. And this is an important exhibition because it's a it's a voice that that hasn't been heard of too much in Los Angeles because there's a there's a gap uh, in terms of the Central American voices that are heard. So it's important that the fire theory is showing in in Los Angeles through intergalactics and that it, it be visible all across the US. Uh, you know, areas where um, the diaspora is reflected. And we're gonna start with our assistant curator who has been a very important element to our research and, and the curation of this exhibition. And Julissa will introduce the fire theory to us. Thank you, Daniela, and good to meet you all. As Daniela said, I am the assistant curator. My name is Jocelyn, and it's been very special to work on this project in particular because my parents are Guatemalan migrants. And for this reason, it's an honor to introduce you all to the Fire Theory who are from the Cristos de Salvador and to be able to have them talk about the issues from Central America in relation to identity, migration, from different point of views. The fire theory, as Daniela said, is formed by Melissa Guevara, Ernesto Bautista, Mauricio Cavistan, and Mauricio Esquivel. They came together in 2009 with the purpose of creating a solidarity network to conceptualize, produce, big words. I'm gonna pronounce them for syllables. Jocelyn, can you hear me? Could you project a little bit more, please? Yes. So they formed with the objective of creating a solidarity network for the conceptualization, production, and visibiliz visibilization of individual and collective projects, opening up various debates emerging in the Salvadoran context. One of their projects uh, that came to fruition in 2006 created a dialogue between uh, combatants in the El Salvador War. And here in, at Intergalactics, they bring together a space in which they touch on different points, views of what the border means to them. And no one else can talk about better about their projects than the members themselves. So I'll hand it over to the fire theory. Who's gonna start us off? Uh, Melissa, do you wanna start? Well, I'm not sure if you all have an, an order, but you all let me know. Yeah, what was the order, Jocelyn? Okay, so we had Mauricio Esquivel going first. And he's going to start off with. Oh, you all are cruel. You're going to throw me in first. I thought I was going to go last. Well, it's OK. Uh, briefly, I am the most, um, the newest member to this collective, although we have been collaborating for, for years since this started. And my. Uh, initial induction uh, was maybe a year ago. Um, I'm hoping if you all have the the video that we're gonna share, even if it's just the odd, if it's without audio, I can just be narrating 
what you all are going to see is uh, you're not just going to see the, the uh, my own participation reflected, but the collective participation with other Salvadorian artists, um, including Oscar Perez, Enrique Alarcón, and Edwin Soriano. We also have uh, Ruben Ponce's collaboration, who you'll see in a moment. We have been working for the last 17 months on a project that is called um, Staying Human. And this is specifically focused within the context of the pandemic and isolation. And amidst the dialogues that we've been having in this process of isolation, that's been really heavy, right? Since the beginning of last year, and particularly our conversations with Oscar, we found uh, overlapping interests in regards to how the ways private and public space interact, right? Uh, that, that we felt very present uh, during isolation and, and, and feeling this sense of imprisonment, right? Uh, because being outside represented a certain vulnerability towards the possible extinction. So gradually this led to uh, a diagram. It's, you know, in reality, it's a pretty huge diagram of what has been produced, but it is a diagram that shows a reality, a certain reality, depending on, on, on who's uh, experiencing this. It may seem uh, utopic. And so we've arrived to a type of categorization uh, of char characterizing a, as a non-utopia. And uh, so you'll see in, a, uh, in just a moment, this city space that is constructed with uh, technology, technological waste. And, you know, we see the structures built in a very sophisticated manner uh, because it was cut uh, with lasers. And we, we, obs we observe reflections about our own cultural identity as Mesoamerican uh, spaces and the formal ways in which he executes his sculptures. So you'll get to appreciate a little bit more of what I'm talking about. It's easier to illustrate visually. And so as I was mentioning, Edwin Soriano is an artist whose processes refer, bridge or link uh, certain techniques from the Paleolithic era in which he uses machinery that, that cuts through rocks and through his work, working techniques connects back to our indigenous relations. And this is truly important because humanity has come to this point in which the exploitation of natural resources is happening. And so we can see these as metabolic changes in our existence in regard to natural resources, because it's precisely the exploitation of natural resources that generates ruins. And so in certain ways, this can be perceived as, as, as a type of ruin, like uh, these elements, as I mentioned, have been created from a technological waste. And so this is the work of Oscar Perez and and recently we decided to include the participation of Enrique Alarcón. He is our videographer and he created all of the um, images that you see here and all of the editing was done by him. And when you have the opportunity to be able to um, see the video as it is there, it's on one of, the, one of our Instagram accounts, which is uh, linked through Lace. And you'll also be able to uh, hear the music of Ruber Ponce. And as well as part of the inclusion and, of, and for my participation in it, I also uh, presented a small diagram that with Im small images that was referring to what happened in New York. Um, this is part of what you can see now is the scene um, inside these containers and where they were um, 
putting the bodies of the people who were pass who were dying as a result of COVID. So that um, very quickly is my participation. And this is also a little bit about also Edwin, Edwin Soriano's participation um, and the formal part of his work. And so all of this has a, has a dialogue. No, it, it's a dialogue with the whole project. Um, in particular, I've been working for two years on the uh, subject of immigration. And um, since I did a trip from Tijuana to Ciudad Juarez, and I think that this project somehow reflects the necessity that we have today as communities, we are pushing our limits we are pushing the limits of borders, and we are also no exploring space as a tourist site. Um, a few years ago, they had the um, they had the conflict for the Cold War, and it also became uh, something for entertainment. It was explore, exploration of the satellites, and there was this whole uh, discussion that it can be opened around this topic. So that's what we're trying uh, to offer here with this project is the possibility of opening these uh, conversations that that are very uh, contemporary. Thank you, Mauricio. And the next person will be Mauricio Cavistan, who will be um, presenting the memory of my parents. Hello. Thank you again uh, for for attending this uh, conversation uh, to the public. So in my case, for LACE, I presented a project that is called The Memory of My Parents. It's a, a audio it's a, a audio project of testimony about immigration to the US. And for several years, I've uh, met different people that I've talked with. And, and fortunately, uh, they have uh, talked to me about their experiences with immigration, um, specifically immigration to the US. In El Salvador, as you may know, it's a country that exports migrants uh, to Canada, to the US, to Mexico, and to, uh, to Europe. And it's um, undeniable that each person, each family in this country has someone abroad. Uh, so because of that, all of these people have something to say. And generally when we associate, when we think about immigrations, what comes to mind as what stands out or what we see in the news lately are the caravans, um, the narco traffickers in Mexico, etc. In this case, for this project, what I was looking for was to tell, or well, not to tell, but to make known these other histories of those immigrants that failed trying to come to the US, or they came and then they went back, or when they went when they had certain, you know, uh, experiences. So for the piece that is in lace, there are two audios that um, were just going to be audios, but given the um, specificity of Los Angeles of being a, a bilingual place, uh, it occurred to me that it would be great if they had a, a video with the voice and off like the audio with a voice and off. And that video would be um, a series of images related to what the person was telling. In this case, the two, his, the two stories are from two um, Salvadoranians in different situations. One experienced uh, forced immigration before the start before the war started. And in the situation at the end of the 70s, um, the 
the the military with the military his family decided to leave they didn't want to have problems with the um, army uh, or with the with the guerrillas that was happening in that moment so they packed their suitcases and and they went to to pursue their dream as they say in their own testimony the the dream and so the memory that he has of his uh, infancy of his childhood is just seven years old and he traveled through all of uh, mexico they arrived to arizona and then one and then and then they had to return to el salvador as if nothing happened and it's very interesting that's also why i have the title of my project the memory of my of my parents because he remembers He remembers how his parents, after that whole experience, did not want to talk again about what happened. And with that piece of his memory of what they would were telling him, he created this whole idea of, of what it was at that time. And it's very interesting because you one wonders, no, a whole year in Mexico, um, there weren't, um, there wasn't GPS, there were uh, uh, smartphones at the end of the 70s, right, in Mexico, and there's the um, the traffickers, and so this whole year they passed to get to the border. So that's a, a shorter audio. Um, it's actually, it's, it's a colorful history and they have a, there's a, a, a common point in them, which is the uh, grandmother who was working in El Salvador without any problem. And one day asked, asked herself, or one day said, I don't want to be in this country and left. And and she paid the the trafficker and, and left and the only thing was that she um bought a scarf and when she was in the middle of the desert and began to feel very anxious thinking that that literally the um the patrol was going to see her with this very colorful scarf that she had it's very a very particular experience but what's most specific about this is that this uh this grandmother this person when she went to the u.s sent money and when with that money she was able to finance her education her undergrad and she helped her family to buy houses where they were living etc so these two stories and so many stories that are surely in this country are the the, the reasons why you know one thinks they're not the reason for violence or they weren't reasons because of the violence or other things that are happening now but because so many times ago the people were just leaving they say oh i don't want to be i didn't want to i don't want to be in this country and so i'm going to um i'm going to risk my future in another place so basically that's the project and um I'm, I have more uh, testimonies, but um, I haven't. I don't have the permission yet to um, to make them public. Uh, but there's a. These are just a couple of the few uh, details of these histories that we can see in El Salvador. Thank you, Mauricio. And now we're going to have a uh, crack, Rodriguez.
Hello, good evening. My name is Crack. I'm going to talk a little bit about my project. Bueno, eh, para hablarles un poco, well, era, to talk a little bit about what this project was, Dream Team. Um, don't take my dream away. There are, there are various uh, visions about what I think about the topic of immigration, like what Mauricio uh, Cavistán was saying. Uh, we all live it, all of us in Central America and in El Salvador, um, no one is outside of this experience. So this project is a recreational activity and of living together that offers a recognition of the, of the story of immigrants um, with uh, what appears to be a football game a soccer game that has uh, different ingredients to initiate a conversation around resistance and survival of the oppressions of capitalism. And where uh, we invited and um, Im immigrants and they participated, immigrants and um, children of immigrants who participated in this project, as well as the users and um, vendors and passersby in MacArthur Park in Los Angeles, which is a very important place in the history of um, immigrations from our people, especially from Central America. And it's a place that I think is like an epicenter of where we could start to talk about that relationship, especially with the United States. So we did a, we reformulated a, a, a sports act and the idea of the American dream to find an, a, a close interpretation of a collective imaginary. From that, we created a game and a rule. It's a project that brings together uh, interpretations of the American dream from the hybridization of um, contrasting perspectives in North America. In, in North America, um, power has been a central. Everything, of course, right, revolves around the US and it presents these characteristics and the symbology of this um, basketball hoop, which you can see in the video, and also the, the ball that's in the middle of this, um, the net. And the South is presented as the periphery of the North and uh, uh, history that is preceded by passion and fanaticism in America, in Latin America, and, and which is composed of uh, Central America and South America. And the, the king sport, which I also play. Uh, and so the presentation of the territories, which I think is important, these spiritual beliefs, uh, the symbol symbology of dreams to create a whole dialogue. So what we tried to do here is to see the resistance that we're posing. This um, type of this type of triangle objects that symbolize the North, objects that symbolize the South, and that uh, dream catcher or the net, which is the territory in which we find ourselves, which is very uh, close. 
So that uh, narrative um, created a reading around the forced um, mobilizations and the colonized territories from our memories and the imaginaries and the um, actions all interpreted by the effects of immigration and the popular passions that are derived from the necessity for wellness, um, the reclam reclaiming uh, nostalgia and the vulnerability of the future. It's a confrontation of the centrality, centrality that the North presents and the hegemony of sports as political agents and that we, we need to, the, the balls that are in the middle of it, like us, that they need to have a lot of strength. So that is where the project was going. It was very interesting um, because of the closeness that we could have with the people uh, who were in that place people who didn't know that they were uh, going to be in the middle of this strange soccer game and uh, using a, a basketball net. So it was very interesting to be able to create a recreational space in order to recognize our future, to recognize the resistance of people who were forced uh, to go, to, who were forced to care for these spaces. And so we, at the end, we gave a medal. And this is also a little bit of the work uh, that we've done with TFT um, that Jocelyn was, men was mentioning, which is uh, the importance of, of these spaces, these activities like uh, sports and soccer. So I'll end with that and then we'll, we'll continue so that we can um, give space for the next project. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Crack. And the next one is Ernesto Bautista with the project of, um, with his project, uh, theater, theater of Disagreement. Okay. Oh, I hear, I can hear myself. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm not sure if you can put one of the two trailers. So I've put uh, the two links for you. So my, my name is Ernesto Bautista. And in 2018, we worked in Tegucigalpa, Honduras with a group of children from the National uh, School for National National School for Arts and Drama, and uh, it was a very basic project, which was to create a, a scene with sixty participants to reflect on the situation of confinement that the children and the parents had. So to create this process. The piece, this uh, film project had the a collaboration of many people. It was a, a very long process like anyone. You know, and films tend to be longer productions, right? And so that's why it took that long. And I was able to count on the, uh, on the support of these children who were critical to developing this, this uh, scenic backdrop. I like to call it a, a type of intervention because we were able to create a, a scenery with the children in which they created these characters. And these characters are exposed to a very concrete significant situation which is part of the film's narrative and so from these stances and 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 visions 
of the, of the characters in this narrative, we hear the children's voices all throughout the film. And the film is split in three pieces. They're very, and they're very, they have very concrete significance. They deal with a type of emancipation and, and it carries a metaphoric uh, character and nature, but also in reference to this, this isolation, this condition of isolation that the children at the border face. And at the same time, from our own context, our personal context and uh, political and national dealings here in Central America, we also discuss the ways in which Central America interacts and participates with the rest of the world. So it's important to highlight that even though this film presents a, a, a certain fiction uh, nature to it, the the arc of the of the children's narrative is and and their the the children's opinions are their own. So when the second act begins, which carries more of the reflection of the children. Right, it, it, it goes into the internal voices of the these isolated voices. The voices heard are a product of these conversations, of this process that we first had uh, in which we dialogue with them, their parents, not only about the, their, developing their characters through the production of the film, but also about the characters as alter egos of themselves with the understanding that I, I, I'd like to pose, I, I'd like to pose from the beginning that I think the most important part of the film I know that I'm going back and forth a little bit, but I'm a little bit nervous. But what I usually pose at the beginning when I explain what the film is and, and what it's about, it really deals with um, this, this issue of children in Central America. And so, you know, it, it presents their voices in which they are raised and, and they are raised in a context in which they they live silenced, and so they grow in such a way that 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 silence is sustained. You know, like it's it's as it just, when you speak to them, they're almost like small animals, right? Like from a certain age onward, those voices carry a very little limited validity. And so that's what we what we wanted to do is make sure have a that they had a stage in which they could voice the way they see the world and how they participate in it and how they want to change it. And that was the, the parting point from which the characters were projected and developed. So the third act of the film, it, it deals with, you know, uh, the, the creation of specific affinities and traits in which they can interact or, or connect with each other. So I invite you all to watch it, follow it on social media. And if you wanna watch the film, then you're also welcome to. Thank you. Gracias, Ernesto. Y ahora, Thank you, Ernesto. And now we're going to introduce you to Melissa Guevara with uh, the Lebreda Testimonies. Okay. 
Good evening. First of all, thank you for this invitation and for the space to share a little bit about the work, right? You know, to share a little bit more, I want to start with this um, personal project. It's uh, testimonies marking a uh, flight. This project is an exhibition and in which territories, the border territories are dealt with. And so I was interested in including not only Central America, which is, you know, the context from which I, I come from, you know, I wanted a, a spotlight El Salvador and how migration affects us not only as a people, but as a region, right? If we talk about the Northern Triangle in Central America that includes El Salvador, Guatemala and Honduras, and also to include Mexico, which is like the stepping stone to this uh, American dream, right? Uh, between uh, in the way of arriving to the American dream. But I also wanted to include where I'm, I'm at in Colombia and Venezuela, which also has a very complicated migration uh, story. And so I wanted to include these territories because yes, in Central America, we can understand migration northbound in the continent. But if we try to understand and look at migration from a wider stance, we can understand how, what, what issues are at hand uh, southbound, Costa Rica, uh, Colombia and Venezuela, Bolivia with Chile. And so it, it's a phenomenon uh, that, that really connects us as a region and continent. And so, you know, I, I started off with these countries, which are the closest uh, countries to me. Uh, I've also shared a link to the video of the, the uh, of a, a database of these territories. Um, this was a collaborative project because I'm not in a border city. So I was able to connect with migrants, artists, folks who collaborated with me to collect and gather information on these territories. And so we started off focusing on the city of Cúcuta, which is one of the most frequented cities between Colombia and Venezuela. Uh, two migrant people helped me, one Salvadorian and one Venezuelan person. Uh, at the border between Salvador and Guatemala, which is also one of the, the, the routes at the north, um, there's also, this is also a conflict area uh, as a result of armed conflict in El Salvador. And, and we know that uh, the U.S. has had a strong influence in, in the 80s. And this is particularly in the Mosote territory in the northern part of El Salvador. And also the borders between Mexico and the U.S in which I collaborated with an artist um, who was in Mexicali and uh, in between the US. And so this was a process of uh, a recollection. The process of creating this map was a process of recollection. And it was also a, a, a matter of pedagogy, right? Because in many ways, this map has always been a tool that we have had at hand. It's quite familiar you could say, but it's something that, that we leave behind, that gets forgotten. But we carry this map, most of all in, in a context in which we talk about it as, as the Americas, right? On, on the outside, we, we, we use these terms of like being American or we are America, but at least when we see this map, it's important for me to highlight that America is not one single area. It's not just the Northern area, but that it also includes 
a wide um, variety of contexts um, and yes, produced by uh, the colonial element, right? But but we're very diverse within this territory. So it was important to highlight that and to build this map as time goes by, because I'm interested in building a, a continuous uh, register or recording to continue building on this map as time passes. And I believe it's also a very interesting exercise that helps us remember our childhood, right? As we continue coloring or filling in these physical um, or visual spaces. And so it, it's a very almost kind of lucid idea between education and learning. And, you know, we, we address, uh, we touch on the, the, these lands that serve as containers for these testimonies for all these migrants, people who are crossing territories in which there's so much conflict and, and territories which are not only affected by this issue of migration, but that there are also so many other matters at hand that make migration not be uh, one solid rigid thing, but that it becomes influenced and affected by so many um, other issues at hand. And so this is uh, an individual uh, submission, uh, uh, a project, uh, but, but if I can continue talking about uh, another project that I got to work with Ernesto Bautista, and it's called The Sound of the Wind in Nobody, Nobody's Lands. And this is a, and just to share a little bit about this general project, uh, this is an uh, artistic exploration, which for us, you know, the conversations that we've been able to have with Ernesto we're interested in having a conversation about the phenomenon of migration as a starting point, but also as something that turns into a spectrum that covers so many other issues and, and topics. So it becomes a, a more in-depth, systemic, contextual, territorial, psychological, legal, historical exploration, right? It's a very layered exploration for us to understand the, the, this phenomenon of migration. So beyond just the movement between places, right? So the first uh, topic addressed by this project is, or the, you know, the first visual representation is this video which is narrated by the voices of three Salvadorian migrants in different contexts, not only in the US, but for us, it was also important to create guidelines for these migrants to start this conversation, to start uh, this process of feeling like, an, uh, like a migrant and feeling foreign to a territory that is not yours. So we embarked on a series of questions in, through which they could share with us their feelings, their doubts, their hopes, their disappointment, right? Up until a certain point as to what it was like to arrive at a specific land. And so for us, it became very interesting because these are very surreal images. They're constructed from a certain imagination. And, you know, illustrate these um, territories, right? Like the Sonora territory. Uh, El Paso, right? So Sonora and between Tex Texas. And then also touching on the borders between Salvador and Honduras. And these are also border territories that, that were a site for conflict in the 80s for folks who were uh, traveling towards Honduras. 
it was important to talk about this uh, these sites uh, and what they meant for migrants, right? And and it was important for us as migrants, myself and Ernesto, uh, you know, living in the exterior, it was important for us as migrants to to also dive into this with our our point of view as as migrants. That was very key to this project too. Ernesto, I don't know if you want to add anything else. Okay. Uh, yes. So basically, the visual piece of this project carries the voices that remain in this distorted territory that, that Meli describes. You know, there's there's a, a part of this this video that focuses in on the village. I don't know if y'all can uh, forward to that minute 35. OK. And OK, there we go. It's a minute 25. And so these images are a little bit distorted in such a way that you you still see like migrants um, thriving, but but we see this as like a reality that is no longer there. It, it's a it's a reality of what they believe is still there, and so you know we wanted to just engage in that dialogue of what that echo looked like could look like. And Meli shared it, you know, pretty in depth already, described it. Bueno, gracias a todos um, por sus. Thank you, everyone, for your incredible presentation. Um, and, and the work that you've done through Intergalactics. Um, and thank you for all of the links that you shared through the chat. We'll make them available later on. Don't worry if you couldn't catch them. Uh, we'll make sure that you we make that available to you all. So now we can start with the dialogue piece. Questions, comments, Daniela? Yeah, and it'd be, well, thank you for providing this context for us, right? And it would be interesting to find out if you can share with us where, how the fire theory came to be and, and the diversity of these collectives, collective of voices from a political context, um, but also your stance as artists working from El Salvador and other locations as migrants. So like what, kind of where did this originate? But how, and also how has this um, intersected with intergalactics and, you know, from, from your origin points, if either of you want to touch on that. I see you smiling. Well, I could talk a little bit, and of course, the other members can interrupt me. But I think that uh, creating this space of production has been very important. This small space of, of community of artists that because of the dynamics that ha we have seen in El Salvador, it's difficult to come to a solid relationship um, like the one we have in FTF, sorry, TFT. 
and also the fact that uh, TFT that there hasn't been curators that have um, taken up that have taken the the word or people from outside who have started to um, come into the space that is usually you, you usually see this in a, in a vertical image from the a vertical relationship from the curator to the artist so that risk or that courage let's call it courage um i do feel like it's imp imp important how tft has um developed and the the small resources that we have to be able to create projects and to redefine ourselves during during the time of of what we now are of what we are now as the 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 fire fire theory and trying to uh, re summarize now and lately there are many projects that we that I wouldn't have been able to do personally without the help of TFT and the experience that, that we have formed with all of the members, um, even uh, Mauricio Perezca, who has a story like um, of beginning other collectives that are like Artificio, to which we all practically all belong. So to give that kind of continuity with TFT, it's it's cool to have these spaces that are always inciting individual individuality, and that we are in that in this resistance to begin to continue uh, doing projects as a collective. Like we're organized, right? We are trying to to conclude that because what this political system that that we're in says calls individualism i think that it's very important to have the support of of our peers and how we have and how we have the ability to connect ourselves to well, so many things we we have fought, we've almost divorced, but we're here trying to trying to continue um, questioning ourselves um, to be well, however the best we can be in this uh, in this dynamic. Um, well, I also wanted to say something. I think it's important to highlight, we've talked about it bef before this conversation, that as uh, Victor said, TFT, our collective structure, and, and it's that uh, economy of friendship, right? But I'd also, I also wanna say that we are, children of the economic crisis of 2008. Basically, our the structure of our work um, was was born out of the lack of the, the 2008 crisis, to the lack of money in the private institutions and um, uh, in, uh, international corporations. So, we we benefit in some way from that um, from that situation. One of our uh, aims, as well as TFT, is to react uh, to what happened to the first in the first decade of 2010, right? And uh, basically. Um, uh, Victor has said everything. I don't know what I don't know what else to say. But um, the 
what's essential about our group is is our collaborative structure and our resistance and to work um, from different perspectives and different uh, the different events that have happened in El Salvador and of course now to bring in members who are outside of the country they um, add to these relationships um, and to all of the um, conflicts in Latin America and in the US and it's a little bit like a feedback loop to to have these uh, uh, voices from outside as well. Bueno, eh, yo también, perdón, Ernesto. Um, sorry, Ernesto. Go ahead. I just wanted to add a little bit. Um, I think that TFT has been constructed as a re as a resistance, as a response, um, but throughout its existence, uh, it's now 10 years old, uh, TFT has also been a process of rebuilding during this time. I, I'm interested in, in uh, highlighting that uh, collective work, but it's just it's not just collaborative work, but but also uh, individual and as a, as a network. We also um, are responding to a context that we are all in, um, but also from the basis of a friendship. We have known each other for very long. And in that relationship of trust that we have, we have that has allowed us to share in a very close way and to also share the the personal crisis that each of us have gone through. And it has been a, a great support and a, a contribution to the um, success of the collaborative. But each person has a re different realities and experiences. And when we come together and we find the space to dialogue and talk, all of these processes, all of these crises, are uh, are poured into that and we um, continue to amplify the experience of each person and that amplifies uh, TFT as a whole. And so it's also very important to highlight why um, as Crack was saying very, very well, we are in a system that um, that uh, that brings us to constructing a personal identity. And uh, I was working with a, a curator that was saying that the, the future is collective. The future is, uh, com is in community. So to try to understand reality in a, in a, in a greater spectrum, uh, we need to understand, we need to share the as in a collective as a starting port a starting point and to have that as a as a starting point to go to the outside and ernesto you were going to say something yes um i feel like at the level of production we are also a response to a very particular context we begin to produce, we began to produce collectively, I think it was um, six years after uh, working together. First, the idea was just uh, in our bubble. It was to uh, allow us to come outside of the environment that we had, uh, that we were brought up in and to look at the social context um, that we were uh, creating as a generation. So in that, so I'd like to comment about that, that the history of TFT has has also been the history of the, the post-war generation in our country, and not necessarily because we have a direct representation uh, of that situation, because um, because what we have gone we have gone through personally through this abyss that there is between 
the communication in El Salvador and and a, and a present crisis uh, that we find ourselves again and that we are directly affected by. So each one begins to respond to these things in their uh, particular way. Uh, or we go to the, the production of crack, that the response of many of the, the uh, presidential periods that now those figures have, um, have died or they're in jail or they've been accused what is politics becomes part of our language of production precisely because of that type of lack. And one of them, which I think is, which, which is the game that we were able to produce uh, in collaboratively are these um, holes or these uh, questions that we had with the generation, the, the war generation there is because we had not we were not born during the war so we are wanting to leave it a little bit to the side and to begin to have a community to have communication of from me to you of that type of figures who are involved in the crisis that we are now living and in that at that time we begin to solidify the platforms, the platform. And I also think that it's important to mention this because until now, I think that we have continued to be part of that generation that I think representationally, there is a type of doubt, uh, sorry, debt with the generation that we think that we don't have because in that sense if we look at ourselves it's like oh we see much we see more lack and there's so much uh, invisible conflict and there's very little criticism of this and it's sterile in many ways i what i'm referring to with tft is is this direct dialogue with the generation and i think that that's important to to, to indicate that the, the communication between us um, is around uh, that, that type of those subjects. Go ahead. Um, yes, uh, to give a little bit more context, because Ernesto was Ernesto mentioned algún, uh, some uh, aspects of our time, but I'd like to. El Salvador has. Um, conflict uh, basically since the conquest or of course before that as well if we don't know uh, much about the history um, it, the the majority of our production comes particularly for, as a consequence of the con, of the conflicts from 1979 and the war uh, lasted uh, uh, two decades, and after that, until now, we've we've had a great um, conflict, especially with gangs who are in in Los Angeles. That all came about because of the migration in the 80s. That the U.S. Uh, saw uh, various um, immigrants in Australia, Canada, uh, and especially in Los Angeles. So many people during the 80s and in the beginning of the 90s, this these groups were organizing in El Salvador and they're one of the main causes of immigration or forced displacement that we have until now. And as Ernesto was also saying, there has been a, a history of uh, military governments, uh, corrupt governments, uh, uh, rightist governments, um, and then other problems with the left. And 
um, suspicion of uh, authoritarianism and possibly a, a dictatorship. So that's a little bit of our of our country uh, summarized in one minute. And so um, we also talk about that. Um, Ve la manera en que ustedes trabajan, conocer su práctica y siempre pensar en que es la manera que ustedes tienen que trabajar, no solo estando en, en, en una pandemia, ¿verdad? En estar um, separados o tener que tener la distancia así, pero es algo que es parte de su realidad por años y años, ¿verdad? Y digamos, es algo que there's always distance from where year long and all throughout uh, the area. testimony that we have in inter intergalactic intergalactics and talking about uh, talking with other colleagues Daniela sorry, I just want to uh, make sure with the interpreters that we are okay we were having a little bit of a of a of a problem Uh, okay, continue. So the question of the testimony in Latin America that Mauricio was talking about, about histories, uh, the question of colonialism, dictators, war, um, and, and the way that the body is disappeared, um, so many times the body is violated, women are raped in Mexico, uh, the, the disappeared, as we call them, testimony becomes something that is very important for us to give reality uh, to, to what's happening from Mexico to Central America and Latin America in general. So I wanted to um, underline the question of testimony because I feel like even having the earth and the um, borders that Melissa uh, told us about, 
sent us uh, and to have people and the, the, the physical question is very important to, to, to mark what is the context to give it voice. Testimony in the question of Mauricio Cavistan in memory of my parents is more direct, right? Because it's a narrated story from beginning to end. And even with Mauricio Esquivel, where we see that city in that video, even though it's a, a dystopic vision, you presented the, these, uh, refer these um, cooling containers that you were, it's something that you see that you're living. So I feel like the question of testimony is, is marked in each of your works, in each of your work. Um, and for example, about, um, Mauricio Bautista has, has a, was able to um, give voice to Honduran children in the context of, in a violent context of immigration that unfortunately they, uh, uh, they have been immigrating. And to connect it with the, the question of against isolation, I think that this research from the um, isolation of children in cages and uh, what's happening again in the US, I think that isolation to give voice and to recognize our histories, I think that it's very important what you are presenting uh, in intergalactics. So I don't know if you, if any of you would like to comment on the question of testimony. I'd like to comment. Uh, for me, it's a very important question because first, because it comes from an, a personal experience. And I think that all of the uh, proposals, not just of uh, TFT, but of all of the artists that um, con that uh, comprise this exhibition. It's the existence of otherness, uh, alterity, the, these other uh, populations that come um, fr from children to um, native uh, populations, to immigrants, uh, women, because I feel like it's a necessary response. It's a needed response. I can also identify with, with it because, or I can also connect it with um, in in the uh, uh, the other month we had no our celebrations of independence no um, in quotes independence in Central America, so these no these unofficial uh, stories these invisibilized stories these um, profiles that do not respond to what is the hegemonic um, stereotype of the white person or we could put it even more specifically, the white man, which is the archetype of the world. But these other, um, in the end, I feel like there is a, there is a context that, well, personally, for me, it creates that um, small, noise, that small crisis, that there are voices, they are fighting, they are in the constant fight, they are constantly in resistance, but the need to continue listening, to continue um, putting that scene of how things are is so important and so necessary that it's there constantly from all corners, from every possible context because it's a reality that, that despite the fact that it's a real that it's a crushing reality it's a reality that is still not something that is creating structural changes so that need to uh, bring these projects out from from the edge uh, and from central america which is uh, also a, a scene which is doubly invis which is doubly invisibilized from the 
north and from the south. We are a, a territory, this small uh, parcel of land between Mexico and Colombia. So uh, to give these voices, give these voices from that scene, which is for us is so complex, but from outside, it doesn't seem so complicated. But I think that El Salvador is, is so present in all of the production of uh, Central America. Hi, hello, I'm Irving uh, Dominguez. I'm here in Mexico City. Thank you for doing this uh, meeting with the members of the Fire Theory. I'd, I'd like to say uh, a quick observation. Uh, I know that uh, Daniela has talked about testimony uh, of the various members of Fire Theory, and something that really caught my attention, and I'm, I know that I'm submerging myself in the artistic, contemporary artistic production of Central America, and there is what's constant in these works is that is using these Sorry, it's difficult to hear the speaker. Um, these these uh, resources of the artistic production, uh, the the digital a digital um, screen uh, cr creates imaginary voices, and in that uh, section of Melissa Guevara's work, where it re digitally reconstructs those territories. Uh, we can see the problems. Sorry, the interpreter is having difficulty hearing. So I see that there are so many uh, points and so many uh, questions. Uh, what really caught my attention also was um, from uh, uh, Mauricio uh, Cavistan, that the testimony is not lost. The testimony um, is, is, is there, is present, whether it's through video or through audio or through memory uh, or the name of people who are disappeared uh, to name and to, uh, to say in, in, to say out loud the names of these people um, that caught my attention. And that section of the border with Mexico reminded me Sorry for speaking so fast. It was, I was, uh, felt rushed by the time also. Well, I just wanted to say that there, there are um, points uh, of contact be between certain border projects like uh, Tijuana in Mexico. There are different uh, contact points also in the themes of of the uh, of these imagine of these imagined uh, territories. There is a, a constant need to um, to go back to presenting the land and its uh, and its lines, its borders, and not only to expand our imaginaries, but in some way to break the hierarchical, uh, the hierarchical lines in which we visualize our territories. So there are these different ways to present um, borders and lines. And, um, Melissa and Ernesto allow us to see the, 
the horizontal panorama of these experiences that are very uh, difficult and emotional and, and personal. Thank you. Thank you, Irving, for, for connecting. Ernesto? Yes, um, and continuing a little bit what Irvin was saying, and also in what my collective was saying, I am also in Mexico right now. And so the subject of immigration or the feminicide, which um, has impacted me a lot lately, and especially the topic of um, refuge, refugee. This is another uh, detail, this uh, horizontality that uh, we are posing, because I feel like in the end, there's a moment when someone is um, constructing a, a path with language, there is a certain type of, with certain sectors, and to also understand that responsibility, that dialogue, in the end, it creates a, di a language of resistance as a possibility out of many, as one possibility out of many. And the symbolic uh, procedure to have a symbolic procedure to be able to give voice to that type of thing that the type of things that go much, go much beyond the simple reading that we could have of these of these groups. For example, when when we work with ex-combatants, there there needs to be much more this aspect of reconciliation, much beyond the the context beyond the, the awareness of their own generation and the um, work that they, the work that they were doing and if it has an impact now on what they're doing or immigrants. With the immigrants, we have, there's a lot to do with anxiety and being, um, and being uh, removed from their lands that they carry so much on the inside that we see it uh, in one hand as a companion and on the other as a dialogue. And we can, no, you don't need to be so respectful, so um, basic because this whole complexity that we are seeing is what we are going to construct the dialogue from or that type of uh, those new questions from which um, they can reconstruct their reality or it can be it can be one way out out of many it can be uh, art, it doesn't have to be art it can be literature music there's so many forms and there's a certain moment in which one uh, becomes so involved um, that it can become even uh, an escape of that same situation of that that one shares that one can be involved in that, but it's 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 one of the many ways. I I'm not saying specifically that you have to be part of those um, those units, but there's something in that dialogue for that which there's something in that dialogue which also uh, becomes a, a language of resistance. Thank you. Con lo que decía este, con lo que decía tanto ir. Yes, I'd also like to comment uh, with what uh, Irving and Melissa and Ernesto were saying. Um, we did a project called Las Hileras, and um, I worked with a writer that if he could um, write 
a script around this context because he was talking about the enclosure of the children in the detention center. So in his text, he was he was talking about what my um, compañeros reminded me about is that this um, uh, this uh, um, they they. They titled this the the freezing places, and it was it, in the development of this text. It was not so much the the negation to accept someone else, but their but their poverty. So in some way, this group with my with my compañeros were trying to support. Um, as uh, Irving was mentioning, to be like a megaphone to, to give voice to other people that historically do not have a right to in, even write their own history. So I think that that's something that's very important. Um, so your contribution, your support as an institution is very is fundamental for us to be able to communicate in, in other uh, space, spaces that perhaps in our in our very own small networks we wouldn't have access to um, and cannot be heard as well as if we are able to extend to other spaces. So thank you so much for the inclusion. And I'd also like to remember that the diaspora is here. Uh, it's extended through all of um, Mexico and Los Angeles, the 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 presence of these voices. I don't know, Crack, if you'd like to talk a little bit about because this is also a testimony, and I am also thinking about the question of the event, the the game uh, that you used as an important element to give voice, but also to to simply make something happen, a relationship. Uh, a soccer game. Thank you so much, Greg, because for us as a team, for us to come to MacArthur Park and to be able to play, uh, to simply participate in this strange um, game, it, it uh, implicated a, a link with, uh, with immigration. And I also consider that I must remember, remember, it's not just about the other, it's also us. I am also an immigrant with a very uh, different privilege to the immigrants uh, with whom we played. Well I, well, I was the referee, but. Yes. Uh, I was uh, thinking about the way uh, of talking about testimonies. And there's another page where, I, the, there's a page where I present my work, which is called the testimony of the of remains. And so it's testimony, it's not just a verbal, but to find other spaces that are, that are not, um, that are not just um, through language. It's, it's a language that's not ours, it's not from the territory. So I think that it's also interesting to think about uh, the language of the body um, and how we talk about education in our territories, which is uh, that has not had the, uh, the access to, to develop itself or to have that How, how they told us that one had to talk. So I think it's also important to find testimonies, uh, even from including the earth, um, from Melissa, from our bodies, and from our memories. And another of the projects of TFT, um, which we uh, developed in a museum in El Salvador, where we tried to give voice to people who had been um, who had been um, abused by the system 
in which they and that project created um, uh, statements around the violation of their rights. And so we we opened a space with a lawyer in order to um, give us to uh, develop a certified declarations of the violations. And we and we uh, put that in in the museum as a as like a territory that has been uh, expropriated and all the work of TFT that that talks about um, recording as something that or to um, to to be able to have it for other people and well that's it to talk about art as as a space uh, not just as an aesthetic space uh, but as a, a political commitment uh, conviction a, a, a support that we can that we can do for ourselves we can begin to um, to uh, approach uh, the realities of other people and and a type of um, presentation, this uh, vertical um, vertical way of looking at what is called performance. And in one way, how art tries to be uh, horizontal with the reality, it, it's like a border. Well, I don't know what size this border, what size this border is, but the border uh, that created between the artist and the spectator when we talk about a, uh, the participants and the facilitators. So that's one of the, um, the uh, activities with uh, TFT. So something else, sorry, that I would like to also note that it is something that's about the reflections that you have been uh, doing the last months, which is something that Greg is also talking about, which is the importance of this political aspect, right, of production, and how also this permeates to everything else, because at the end of the day, to me, has been a construction in a way of this uh, Kate's, Kate's uh, phrase that the personal is political and the talks with other artists about the body, the body is political. And right now during my travels to Bolivia, one exhibition that I was able to see the title was Lo, Lo Espiritual es Politico, which is the spiritual is political. So to me was very interesting to see how uh, this uh, necessity, this necessity for a political stance and a political thought that it is far away from the non uh, bipartisanship, bipartisanship, what we know as a political party that in our, in our context is, is corrupt, but that conscious of the necessity of rethinking of um, ourselves. And I think that that is also to very important to note just to put it like that. And I also wanted to say something. Crack uh, mentioned about the uh, the registry of the testimony. One of the mantras that we have at TFT is the registry as a declaration of existence. It is one of the foundational pillars or what really holds us up. And at the beginning, it was directed to our work, right? It was specifically to our work and our uh, art, our body of work, but it's been 10 years literally of, the, of TFT's uh, work. That philosophy, if you can call it, it is projected towards the kind of um, art that we are all creating and uh, seeing the testimony as a declaration of existence as well. So us as inter, or the people speaking about all these histories, right? Because before it used to be easier to be an artist that just described what they did and what they saw in certain situations, that it was just a description of existences. But in this case, the way in which we are working and a lot of artists are working uh, today 
is to involve the protagonist and for them to take the reins of their own history, such as Wicho said. So, and also like we just said, all these collectives that have not had the right to uh, write their own histories. And we call it, you know, we, we work from our uh, little bunkers or trincheras, and we are trying to generate these archives, these journals, these registries, et cetera, that are able to navigate towards the future. And, you know, without that, the rest is not function. So that should be a testimony of what is happening right now. Thank you. Thank you, Mauricio. I do not know if we have a question from the from the audience here. Hello, hi everybody. I am going to share a comment directly from Facebook. And Tatiana Alemana is saying she put a lot of smiley emojis with stars in the emojis eyes. And I think that uh, she loves the conversation today. And I am also seeing the uh, a comment here in the in the chat box. And there are uh, several comments actually. But I wanted to share that. Well, I have been at the gallery for a long time. So I spend time with your works every day. And I have seen a lot of people and visitors just come by, a lot of people that we know, colleagues, friends, family members, and a lot of tourists as well that just walk by Hollywood Boulevard. And it's been really amazing to see and to listen to all of the responses uh, from the audience how they react to the multimedia installation of TFT. And I believe that there are a lot of elements from intergalactics that are a very dense and very strong in a lot of ways, particularly in the emotional and the political. But yes, it has been very beautiful to see how is that the audience uh, experiments to walk around our space and to spend time with your work. And I just wanted to share that because, yeah. Thank you, Juan. Also, we have a comment from Sarah. Sarah, would you like to just say it out loud, Sarah? Hi, thank you so much, everybody. Like Juan said, we're really, we're living with your work every day. So it, it feels very deep, a, a deep connection to everything that you're doing. So it's so wonderful to see your faces here tonight, all of you, without a mask on crack. Uh, so thank you very much for tonight. Yeah, yeah, algo que... And something that Sarah is uh, mentioning in her comment is the thing about working through COVID because we were working via Zoom and well, Crack had the chance to come here and he, he set this challenge of organizing a soccer game when COVID was like at its peak. Well, it's still at a speak. I don't even know <laughs> what COVID is doing. <coughs> but maybe if you want to say one last thing, <clears throat> as Melissa was saying about, I really love that there is a clash or, or uh, you know, how is that? The fire theory has been constantly evolving and transforming. And I think that is also a thought that we share from Intergalactics. This is not just one project that has one single form, but it is expansive and it is evolving. And we want to keep thinking about it for a very long time. And sorry, I am going on a tangent, but how this, uh, 
how this matter of working in isolation that to me was very it was very heavy being in los angeles and recognizing our privileges here and also recognizing your own situations we were working together i don't know if you want to share uh, anything related to that about the process of collaborating together during these times I believe that uh, sticking to being coherent to this dynamic of the collective and the that's why I really love to work through the logic of cinematography and its production because in a way there is always a very little corner to uh, bring something from different perspectives. And I think there is always a responsibility of a dialogue with the whatever other the other or other people bring in that sense and i think that our uh works in a way are not entirely ours they're just proposals that we bring to the table and their works are circulated with our names but that at the end of the day they're not things that we have 100 percent done on our own and ultimately there are things that start and end in our own personal and mental context. So I would like to recognize um, all uh, all the people who are involved in creating this. So I mean, here there's so many of them that uh, have allowed for all these works to see the light. And at least in my own case, there's so many people that have brought their own vision or their testimonies and um, a lot of times the only thing that uh they have and not only they have brought that but they have shifted and they have allowed some people to to carry that um arc of testimonies and that reflection that maybe was only meant to come or to be born out of those conditions of the artistic proposal. And I hope that it is not cliche or corny, but I just wanted to say that and that I just don't, uh, I just want, wanted to say thank you for, for that. And in my case, uh, it is everybody who has been uh, an active collaborator and Tatiana, Tatiana, who did the edition at 360 degrees, I mean, everything, and also, and to you, uh, to Lace. And well, uh, basically recognizing that, recognizing that kind of thing and, and, and not, never to stop doing it because when we forget to recognize uh, both the context in which we engage in dialogue and also the people that come with us along the way to produce these spaces of dialogue i think that uh, we we are going against maybe the same things that maybe we sometimes propose so that Uh, yes, so it's been very, very nurturing. Me that I was working with the, the team at Lays, it was very lovely to spend time with you all in that relationship of uh, deciding of uh, uh, materials and also talking about and also hearing uh, Jocelyn's and Juan's uh, testimonies that they have that role. I mean, Jocelyn being from Guatemala and Juan being from Mexico and how that has Just having the opportunity to engage and work with you all and how you see things from their 
in your context and I am very privileged privileged to be able to uh, weave that uh, layer of a uh, dream set for me is very strong and just having a relationship to everybody that was able to collaborate in the space, like my family members and my friends that I uh, got to meet in that small residence that um, it actually happened. So it's been really cool, all the feedback that uh, we you know, got being in this space and speaking about MacArthur. And it's been very important to inject some energies and force to this project because at the end of the day you name it but it, it it's it's everybody's it's like Cuevana, the website that you could just just watch movies pirated movies pirated films and it is the ability of uh, creating a project that it is everybody's and that is collective So like that, I think that is very important to point that it has been through the pandemic. Well, we are still in a pandemic, but 2020, so quarantines, pandemics. So it was a very heavy period, yes, but it is also that something within myself made me uh, see the importance of uh, networks of support. All these, all these networks that brings us uh, help, and I think that in a way, lays to that. But uh, yes, it was uh, within this a very uh, tough context of isolation that really took a lot of things away from us, but also at the same time made us to uh, made us rethink our own presence. And like I said, from myself and my own experience to focus or to highlight these networks of support and how it's very important to know that those networks exist and they are there and they're available and they support us in every way possible that uh, maybe there anything that can support us as human beings, as people. And I think that for me, it's been very, very valuable uh, within this process and that Yes, I think that uh, uh, a lot of the people here in this call are part of those networks. And I am just profoundly grateful for that space of being able to share. Well, it's about time to say goodbye, right? Well, to reiterate what to reiterate everyone, I share what my compañeros have said, but I would, and I would like to thank um, you as an institution and also to the public that has joined us. But I'd, like, I'd also like to comment uh, finally something that's important from my personal perspective, which is that I think that when somebody immigrates, immigrates, they realize how, uh, uh, strange their historical and natural context is the the nature that they grew up with i think it's one of the most important things that we should continue to value to take care of water to take care of natural resources because if you realize um we had a great worry uh, to uh, take care of nature um so many people uh, started to uh, fill their house with plants, no, to, to uh, imitate the outside world. And to, if we also talk about um, social political uh, questions, there's also politics that um, are involved in the environment. So to be able to do a reflection in this conversation and have that present for the, the steps that will be, that we take in our, um, in our day to day. So with that, I also, um, I thank you and I'll close my participation. Okay, so I'll be the last one. Well, I'd also like to thank everybody and thank you to Lace 
um, for the invitation to participate in this project and this conversation. And to everyone who has attended, I think that the thing about the pandemic and with the um, with the closures and in terms of the work um, in reality as uh, well, actually TFT is, is used to working from a distance and online. So it really wasn't a great change, um, but actually um, as um, to take care of nature and take care of plants as in this past year has it has been a difficult context in the in this past year but we continue to to work and well just that uh, just to give my thanks and thank you uh, daniela thank you to the whole team at least that um it was very interesting to set up a multimodal uh installation in different parts and yeah it was it was very good thank you to everyone thank you thank you to everyone thank you to the interpreters and we're going to have other conversations next week uh, we're going to have a, a, a publication soon and so there are many things on our website if you'd like to go over those uh, thank you so much to the fire theory again to uh, for being with us tonight a big hug to all of you take off your uh, open your microphones and say goodbye bye bye guys <laughs>